Hello and welcome to another episode of In the Power Room. I'm Mike Moore. Today on In the Power Room, we're going to be talking about an IEEE 1188 discharge test. Stay tuned, we'll show you how that happens. Have something to sell? Sell it with moreu.com. It's easy. No upfront costs. Send us your equipment photos, description of equipment, your desired price, and seller's terms on the deal. MoreU.com will upload your equipment details on our store and promote utilizing email blasts, social media, and our vast contacts. When it sells, MoreU.com collects a cost-effective commission, pre-negotiated percentage from the seller. Hello and welcome back to In the Power Room. I'm Mike Moore. Today on In the Power Room, as we mentioned earlier, we're going to be talking about how to perform an IEEE 1188 discharge test. The Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers came up with what they call the 1188 standard, recommended practices for maintenance, testing, and replacement of valve-regulated lead-acid batteries for stationary application. Some of the personal protection equipment required for an 1188 discharge test, or what people refer to as PPE, include safety glasses or a face shield. Always good to have that. You should have insulated tools. Make sure that your tools are properly covered. There's no bare or exposed metal. You should also have some neutralizing agent in the event of any type of battery spill or acid coming in contact with anybody. This will help neutralize the acid. You should also have fresh water. And you should also carry with you protective gloves. Gloves should be rated for the voltage that you're working on. Safety shoes. They also recommend portable water and eye wash. They also recommend that you have a Class C fire extinguisher. Although some of the manufacturers don't agree that that's always a good idea because the potential of a thermal shock, as well as making sure that if you're going to be moving cells up and down or around, you should have the proper lifting device along with the lifting harnesses ready to go. For today's discharge, we're going to be using a uh, 48 volt load bank. This is the Canon model L48500. This is a uh, resistive load bank. This can go up to as high as 500 amps. It is meant for a 48 volt uh, voltage. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take these four 12 volt mono blocks, connect them in series, and then connect it to the load bank and we'll see how well it does at the published five minute rate. As you notice, I'm not using my insulated gloves. The reason for this is this voltage on this system is only 48 volts. Anytime you go much above 48 volts, it's a really good idea to be wearing rubber gloves as well as a protective apron and then also possibly an arc flash suit if you're going to be working on higher voltage systems, anything above 250 volts. Brush the connections. Usually the manufacturers will provide you a plater's brush. Make sure you get all the dirt and debris off them. If there's any type of copper oxidation, that blue stuff or that white stuff, you want to get all that stuff off. Get some NOx. Put a little NOx on those connections. Great. And the terminal arrangement will really dictate how the torque values will be set up. These particular units come with what they call a copper insert. This is a soft drawn copper that's embedded in the lead as the positive and negative terminal. They call it a female insert or a female because it is accepting a bolt as the male. The thing you need to worry about with this is you should always start these connections by hand. And the reason for that is because the soft drawn copper when it's dug into with a stainless steel bolt, which is normally what the manufacturers will provide you, this stainless steel bolt is much, much, much harder than the copper. And what will happen is if you don't have that properly threaded initially, it will basically cross-thread the threads and then ruin that terminal. And then you might have to uh, get a new battery or if the manufacturers allow you, they will allow you to sometimes thread them to the next size. But in order to avoid all that, don't do that. Also take particular care to the uh, torque measurements that the manufacturers recommend because this will certainly make sure that your discharge has no sparks or arcs or smoking of connections because it can happen when you start running high rate discharges if you have any type of high resistance in any of those connections you're going to see it right away 
with heat, a lot of heat. And again, I'm just tightening these by hand. I'm going to come back with a uh, torque wrench and make sure that we hit it exactly where they're supposed to be. We're also going to go over it with a uh, digital low ohm resistive meter to make sure that all of our connections are in the acceptable range prior to the discharge. In this particular case, I'm torquing these to 165 inch-pounds. Check with your manufacturers again to double check to make sure what's the proper torque values for the terminals and the units that you're working with. You should hear a click when the torque wrench hits the desired torque value and then move on to the next one. Do not over torque because again this will strip those threads right out of that copper insert. We're going to take a few measurements. We're going to take a look at our temperature our units right now are at 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. That's good because that means we do not have to apply any K factors or any type of temperature correction to our discharge. Some open circuit voltages. Right now I have the battery connected in a 48 volt string. The terminal voltage on these batteries which are at full charge is at 51.18 volts per cell. When I had these batteries on float prior to disconnecting the charger, these batteries were all floating at 2.25 volts per cell, and the current was stabilized over a four hour period, and it was running at approximately 0.1 amps. And we're gonna measure the individual units open circuit prior to the discharge. So we have unit one, two, three, four. Setting our measurement on the voltmeter or our multimeter to volts DC. We're going to go right across each terminal. Unit 1, 12.83. Unit 2, 12.79. Unit 3, 12.83. And Unit 4, 